Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Uh, today I have something quite modern, something quite useful, an uh, E-Force RTX 2080 Ti. And I do mostly do retro hardware, but uh, this was donated to me. And I figure we have like a 50-50 chance of making this card work again. Because it is broken, that's why it was donated. Uh, I think it's been worked on before, but uh, yeah. So this is the, like I said, EVGA, and it's a 4 win 3 card. So, yeah. Some screws missing on the back plate, like half of them. So yeah, I think it's been a part, or at least partially a part. Also, I had to put back the connection for the LED here. The RGB, because it has RGB, it's so important. Uh, yeah, so it has been a part, at least somewhat. Uh, so uh, I tested this card in uh, Windows 10 and Linux and it artifacts when trying to install the drivers or boot in Windows and, uh, and the drivers won't load because you end up with an error code 43. EPC also reports 0 megabytes of RAM. So I have run a program called Mats and Mats and Mods on it that I found on YouTube from another a specialist in repairing cars like these and uh, we're gonna have a look at that but basically that program allows you to identify broken memories I think you can also figure out if the GPU is fine or not but uh, yeah apparently the most common problem with the GTX uh, or the RTX uh, 2080 Ti series is the fact that you have memories at the bottom close to the PCA slot here and then they tend to separate from the PCB apparently because who knew that having a super heavy three slot car, or like look at the RTX 4090 today, having a car weighing a ton on this poor connector here is a bad thing when the whole thing flexes. But yeah, so the fact that uh, this car has three ships down here seems to be the problem with these cards. So if we're lucky, all we have to do is reball a ship or two. So yeah, let's uh, start up uh, this card in uh, with this Mats and Mods 2. Uh, I'm gonna post a link in the description to, to the other YouTuber. He has download links and a guide for it, so I don't have to make a 25 minutes guide like he did. Uh, you can watch his if you want to figure out how to make your own boot bull uh, Mats and Mods uh, stick to basically look for bad RAM and stuff like that on your Nvidia card. So we're gonna boot up uh, NVIDIA mats from a USB stick. It's gonna help us uh, find out what memory module on the card is bad. Or modules, if we have multiples. So it's running a test right now. And I suspect the red lines is artifacting, but I'm not an expert on mats and mods here. Uh, I'll we'll see what it comes up with. So I got a fail, but I expected that. So should have somewhere here a report file, report.txt. So we can check this report file here. So we got our like memory channel. So we got channel A, and it it's uh, 64 bit wide usually full channel. So I got ship 0 and ship A. For channel A, then I got channel B, ship 0, ship 1, and so on. So you can see that it's uh, uh, getting an error on uh, B0. So that's our ship. So when we look at the card later, we can actually figure out which ship that actually is. But there we have our errors. So we got failing bits B0 to something. Thing is, I ran this before and I got stuck at B uh, bit 7 all the time, but it seems that something else is broken now because we're getting stuck at bit 15, which makes it the first 16 bits. So that's interesting, actually. I ran this test before to figure out the program and so on. Uh, so you basically have the address on the left, and then we have zeros that it expects, and then we have FF in 
times 8 that it gets. And we get a fail. But at least uh, we know what ship it is. And that is failing. Because that's the useful thing here with this program, first useful thing. If you're an expert on a program, you can probably figure out other things. But we have one ship that is either bad, or it has disordered itself, basically cracked balls, or the memory control in the GPU is bad. You can either try reballing the ship or uh, replace it. And I'm gonna reball it because I don't have a replacement at this time. So I haven't taken one of these apart before. There is a back plate, obviously. Then there seems to be, we could call it a front plate, connecting that. And the cooler itself for the GPU seems to be a separate piece. So I actually think starting with the cooler makes more sense. Otherwise, we're just gonna have that loose, like the top plate in between, loose there. So I'm actually gonna start with this and see if we can get off the main heatsink here. RGB connectors. So that was easy enough to get the cooler off. So yeah, there was some, what I said, there was a, like a front plate here. A little bit out of a thing because there's thermal pads here, and then there should be thermal pad underneath that too, or some kind of paste. I think it is. Yeah, can we paste? But like I said, there's a lot of screws missing here, like half of them, I think. Should be thermal pads for the GPU on this because I checked the game in Nexus uh, video on this disassembly should be like uh, I don't think there's any more screws. There should be pads for the uh, yeah, there's pad for the memory and pads for the GPU and the memory is over here or not the memory. I think I think it's mainly for VRM. Surprised how much those things <laughs> stick. So that's the back plate. I'm gonna remove uh, this thermal pad and put it on the back plate so we can work on the card. So I think this should come off now, too. Nope, it should not because it's attached there. What the heck? So that goes okay. So there is a piece here that needs to come off. So yeah, that's that. Uh, weird double sandwich. But I don't think the car was apart to this extent before. Oh, so I think we should move over some stuff. So that should expose our problematic memory area. So I'm just removing some paste here. I just like to remove as much as I can without any solvents because you're just gonna end up with more uh, solvent, uh, more of a mess if you add solvent first. And this is just a uh, Beal Tema, it's like Beal uh, Team or something translated to English. Uh, it's basically the same as uh, like your. Uh, isopropanol alcohol but there's some 
Är det typ sin dyst? Jag har också fått en petroleum, like gasoline. Which melts uh, a lot of stuff, but not everything. But it melts paste. It can also melt tape. So if you have like stickers or any kind of like foam or anything around your ship for some protection, it will most likely melt that uh, the, the actual glue from the tapes. Tapes don't like it. But there's nothing like that here. So don't care. So yeah, it kind of penetrates and just solves the paste, so you can actually like swab it up. So now we have the card apart. We can have a look here. And here is obviously our GPU. And we had maths and mods before, and we had a bad module or bad soldering. Problem with, with the memory module between the GPU and the memory module on uh, channel B. And the way this works, from my understanding, is that you basically take the GPU so you can read the text. Top left corner, you have an arrow that's like your starting position. Like for the ship, I suppose ball one would be somewhere there, maybe. Doesn't really matter. But that's, you should have an arrow there. This has a metal frame, but I can see the arrow there. Uh, so you go opposite corn, bottom corner. So bottom right here. That's where channel A is, the first memory channel. Uh, so it goes in uh, counterclockwise. So like A, B. C and so on. And also the numbers goes backward. So this is A1 and this should be A0. This should be B1 and this should be B0. And this is the one in maths that said uh, we had a problem here. So and, for, and this is Samsung RAM. So that's uh, good I think it is. It said it's in GPC and yeah I can read upside down apparently. So this is Samsung. So it's apparently quite likely that all you need to do is reball the problematic ship. So we need to take this one off, reball it, put it back on again. So this is B0, the problem is. But yeah, it could also be that the memory controller for this channel here is actually broken. And then we have a brick. So yeah. And if this, the ship itself, uh, if the reball doesn't work, we could buy a new ship. That, they're quite expensive. I think it was on like 30 40 euros for ship. So I don't have one because I'm not gonna buy one unless I have to. So if we have to put one on there and that works, uh, I suppose uh, some editing will remove that time delay for you, but not for me. So I suppose the next thing to do is actually just to remove this ship. And I'm gonna put this card on a hot light because a uh, PCB like this modern one is gonna suck so much heat. I think it's gonna be nearly impossible to get it off without doing damage. Uh, I have the card on the board heater and it should be at the temperature now about 100 centigrade on the RAM so, and I put this aluminium heatsink on here uh, it's, a, it's a heatsink with some foil to protect the core the die and some tape around, captain tape around the sides to protect it even more uh, also on the connector, so you don't, don't get solder there, and it should also reduce uh, any discoloration uh, on the PCB, I've learned, so that's a good thing. So essentially what you're gonna do is remove this chip here. It's gonna add a small amount of flux here. So a lot of components around the ship, so yeah, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky than uh, like a U44 MX 460 I did, and some other cards I practiced on, but uh, yeah, Let's see if we can remove it without disturbing anything around it.
We need to clean up the old solder here. So I put the memory chip under the microscope. Uh, I already know it's uh, not usable, but uh, the first thing I was looking for was corrosion. And uh, when it looks like a gray paint color, almost like this, that's uh, apparently 
when you had uh, uh, whole solder joints. So I already scraped this one a little bit. So this is like corrosion. So when you scrape it, it gets shiny again. So this one must have been bad. Maybe this one too. Uh, this one most likely. Yeah. Uh, like I said, this one. Uh, and we got another one here. Unsure about these. Uh, yeah. But like I said, this ship isn't usable and it might be my fault or it might have been that the whole time. I'm not sure. Uh, because um, apparently they do, uh, the pads do rip off these ships apparently sometimes, even like due to the stresses uh, on the card with physical stress the funny thing though or funny but when i got it off this one was missing this one was missing so i took a brush and cleaned it up so i could film it for you and uh, this one came off with the brush so that is missing also you can actually see which is probably this pad it's actually in here in uh, here so yeah, uh, that's the pad. I was quite nervous taking this off. I might have been uh, too hasty, but yeah, it's hard to tell because this can apparently happen. Uh, the pads get ripped, ripped off when the board flexes, so they might already have been broken. Uh, but yeah, this ship isn't usable. And I have checked on eBay. One of those is about 20 euros. So I guess I'm buying new RAM. For you it's probably been like a second, uh, but for me it's been a month that I got my new RAM shipped from eBay. So I bought three of them, about 20 euros each. So hopefully this should fix the card. So old one here, and I got some new ones here. So let's put it on and see if we can get the card working and pass mats and mods. I have the card on the board heater here. here. And uh, last we cleaned up uh, the pads and I got a new ship up here. So we're going to put some flux on the pads on the board. And these ships are alternate in the dot in the corner, so bottom right here and then top left here. And that one is missing, but there would be bottom right and top left. But on the board it is pretty hot. So, the ship should be on now. So we got, this is R22 on these over here. This should be the V-core. We have three inductors up here. This is LR47. And those should be the memory from what I've seen. So we should, you just want to check the resistance here. And we've got about 20 ohms. And all of those should be the same. They're basically in parallel. So there's an inductor for the three phases for the memory. It's just under, say, 19 to 20 ohms. 
And the next one is an R22, and that's is pretty much for one multimeter hard to measure, but that should be the core. So at one volt and like 300 amps in pulse, you get almost no resistance. So, so I figure we take a look under the microscope. I can't show that much now because of the location. Oh. The GPU is higher than the RAM, for example. Uh, my microscope only so high and tall and so on, but uh, to show this side here. So this is the new ship because we can see there's nothing to the left. I've got one there, and I've got the empty one, and that last one. So if we look at the new one, the solder in place, we can see some balls, and uh, I don't see any bridges. I looked around with my naked eye with a magnifying glass, and uh, seems fine too. But I see like half half the ball, quite uh, shiny, uniform from what I can see here. And uh, we got the next one to it, an old one, and uh, yeah, they look bigger. But I think that because they're so oxidized, I guess if that just happens over time, I don't know. This is not this is not leaded solder. It's so more than uh, guess that might be normal for it. But yeah, and they did not look particularly shiny in new ships either when I checked them until I saw them. I just used Amtec flux there. So anyway, so yeah, you can see quite literally what this uh, new ship was, is the old one. Uh, can also see a number difference, like a batch number 943, that has 843, but the rest is the same. Then we got the, two, the other old one there. So yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it seems to look good. So time to test it with the cooler on. Time to put the cooler on. Uh, I'm just gonna put the only the GPU cooler on um, because the card isn't drawing that much power. Yeah. Most of the time when I was testing it, the fans didn't even run because it's winter here and pretty cold. And uh, the professional repair people I've seen use a smaller temper heatsink usually because it's faster and. Uh, the car doesn't leave the wrong thing. I've seen videos where they don't have any heating at all during some phases of testing, but I don't dare do that. So I'm gonna put the stock one on just to, just to work as a heatsink, so we can test it. But we don't need to put on like any cooling for memory or anything because uh, the test it doesn't draw any real power like in that game. Now I'm just checking the color of the ships. I actually noticed these are somewhat yellow. And I figured, did I do that with heat and my normal settings? But uh, no. So, yeah. You never know on eBay, this might be used, might not even work. Uh, but the seller I bought from had uh, like 99%, and they sold like hundreds, if not thousands of these. So, it seems to be the one to go to. So, I'm pretty sure they're fine, uh, used or not, as long as they're fine, I don't care. You could get, I think it's over 740 square millimeters. Compared to RTX, what is it, 4090, it's like 600. Game Nexus just had a video out on that like yesterday. Which is like, what is today? 23rd of December, so like, yeah. About the GPU's pricing versus die area, how the price has gone up and the die has gone down. So yeah, this is like one of the biggest one they ever sold. And I think that some of the new 4000 series were some, some of them might have been three times more expensive for the same die area. I, I do know the nodes get more expensive, but uh, yeah, people seem to defend uh, this too. It, uh, it's not proportional because they also covered how this is not the pro proportional to say uh, uh, inflation and stuff like that. So yeah, there's definitely been a creep in uh, what they charge you for what you get. In terms of what uh, it costs them to make versus what you pay. But anyways, we're repairing stuff here so we don't have to pay them again. That's a plan. So ship or paste, we don't care because it's going to go off if it works. I'm going to put something else on here. It's a lot of paste and a thing like this. That's probably way too much, but well, whatever. I think why these cards break is the, the position of the RAM and the fact that the cards weigh so much these days. That at least the discussion I read by people who do this for a living. So yeah, 
And I saw the same thing, the same design on the new RDNA 3 card, the 7900 XTX used the same kind of layout. So I do wonder if they will also suffer from uh, RAM that needs to be replaced or reballed. Next to die. I'm gonna put my space there where it doesn't do any good. Would have been easy. Would have been easy with a temporary cooler that fits this. You can just throw one. So people using like Intel stock coolers and stuff. Like they had a test. One dude had a test bench where he had a card facing with the die up, basically with a riser. So you can just put a cooler on top, which makes sense. Like that quick way of testing. If you're doing this for a living, you're gonna waste a lot of time doing what I'm doing. But it takes more time for me to modify or buy a custom or modify something and buy a racer cable custom or yeah. So for the few times I might have to do this, it might be the only time if you're lucky. Okay. I'm not counting final assembly. Yeah, this should be enough for testing. We don't even need the fans connected. The card is in machine here. Because I took that to catch a card for OBS so we can record that. So you can see the screen here and also have some actual proper uh, capture with some quality. So yeah, only thing left to do is to push the button and hope this works. Because I'm quite nervous actually. Spent money on this and time and so on. Oh, we got an image. <laughs> Come on, we can do it. No artifact thing, but we didn't have that before either. But the fact that we don't have any more is good. Uh, Matt's mod should start. I left the stick in since last time. So we get a pass now, I will be happy. And last time we had some like outliners where we saw some different symbols, and so far it's all the same, which is good, I think. And now we've got different ones, but we still have two types, and not, none of them are like have something superimposed almost. So this looks good. This also looks good. Before the green one had like, they were like out of line and stuff like that. So it actually looks like this could work. Pass! Yes! <sighs> so I didn't just waste 60, 70 euros on eBay on RAM. That's good. And uh, yeah, I got this card donated, so that's nice. Uh, thanks to him, he's gonna stay anonymous. So he, he does repairs too, and uh, works in the industry and stuff, but uh, he's actually on YouTube, but uh, doesn't have his own channel, so I won't point him out. But he knows who he is, and if he sees this, I'm gonna thank him for the card. It was free, after all. Uh, yeah, I don't know why he didn't repair it himself, but I think it's mostly work-related, like too much to do, too little time, and uh, maybe. Unlike me, it probably makes more just and buys a new one rather than fixing it. But anyways, that's a rant there. But yeah, donate the card almost free. My next problem is it doesn't fit anything I have. Power supply nor uh, case. So that's a problem. But anyway, let's try some an operating system and see if we can actually run something on this. Because this is passed here, but this isn't 100% from what I understand. But it's... Uh, Good enough that we can actually try something. Assemble the card now and try something. So it's time to assemble the card and I have cleaned it from the temporary paste. And uh, yeah, so there are basically a front plate, which is this one, and then we have back plate. So I'm gonna get the front plate on first because it screws into the front here. And the front, uh, the top plate, we could call it, but it's like the bottom <laughs> when you turn the card upside down. But yeah. Since the back plate is called the back plate here, I have to call this the front or top plate, I guess. So yeah, but before I put this on, I'm gonna move over the thermal pad, this one here, because I don't know exactly where the center is if I have it on the top plate. So. 
just gonna move it over to here because I don't want to miss a MOSFET. They are the ones getting hot here. Uh, the shocks have that weird thermal uh, gunk. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. That's weird. I swear when I took it off, I was like, this looks short because uh, yeah, I have a heat pipe here. And yeah, I figured like that looks short. Like, can it really cover all the MOSFETs? And nope, it doesn't. What did EVDA do there? I really don't like open air cards because uh, well, I think it's like I know they're superior in noise and stuff from what you can buy, but the thing is, like, what's the best blow you can buy these days? A two slot quadro or Tesla, something like that, because you can hardly buy, you can, but fine. But yeah, very few blowers are made these days as an option. And they're mostly two slots, and they pretty much not changed that much in size, so yeah. What I'm gonna do about missing that one there, I have pads, I just don't have the same uh, softness, I would like to have the same compressibility, I think. I'm just gonna check something here, how far is this distance here? Because why? I think they skipped maybe on the memory side, maybe that doesn't run that hot, so they were like, screw it. It just feels like a design mistake where they missed something. All about there. It's all the MOSFETs. And how wide is this? That's not even close. What the fuck? Like, how could they design the cooler? This is why I don't like aftermarket coolers. I, I'm a blower guy by reference card. And Gamers Nexus hates them, but uh, well, I like Gamers Nexus anyway. Uh, I think it's nice with options, but there are very few blowers these days. I actually saw someone ahead of a low version of this one, the trade. So I wish I had a working one at that point. Can just like trade. Mm. Yeah, so motor padding isn't gonna help me anyway. And where is the contact points? Just trying to figure out where the tip actually goes. It misses on the edge there. Oh, it misses the whole one of the memory. So yeah. Well, I guess, since a lot of the heat probably goes into the actual board, it isn't that bad to make some MOSFET or two, but uh, it's less than ideal, I guess. So we could technically, maybe, because there is aluminium out here, we could figure out the height difference, and it's slightly lower. So if you put like a mill pad there, and one millimeter or something, you could get it. Well, I don't know what that is, but it looks like two millimeters seems to be what we need. We could just shim it in with the plastic gun, so it's going to be slightly thinner. So my plan is to put this on there, and that will contact, uh, let's see, here. The plan. This 2mm one is fairly soft. 1mm is the most common I use, and mine are pretty hard. Oops. Mine are pretty hard. The say harder ones are actually better thermal conductivity, but I suppose that's relative to the brand. So that's going to go like that, and this fits. I think we're ready to put on the front and back plate here. Remove the screws. I have a lot of people put uh, well, the screws in trays and stuff and so on. And I do if I have to, but when I disassemble something, I have to leave it for a month, especially then. I put the screws where they went in, so even if there is a plate covering this one, the threads are there, so I can put the screws in there. That way I know where they go. Uh, you know, a very good way not to lose the screws and uh, know where they go a month later. Now since I only have half the original screws, I have to be a little bit creative with the pattern. It's gonna look decent. So these are stainless steel screws from an RC kit, so pretty high quality, pretty expensive. I had to machine the heads down so that would fit the holes here, the countersunk holes. Uh, 
Eller vi talar. But uh, it's better than no screws and no pressure. Because then the MOSFETs, uh, the VRMs won't have any proper contact either. This basically binds the two halves together. Sandwich them. I do like to have the GPU supported with the, these back plates and front plates uh, due to the weight. It's gonna stiffen the card. So let's uh, add some paste and put the actual heat sink on. So this is the cooler. It's only held in place by these four screws. I, I did weigh the cooler. It's 910 grams, so pretty much two pounds exactly, I think. 54 grams, yeah, two pounds and two grams. Mm. So yeah, these four screws. Yeah, these four screws only have a small spring. I think that's kind of weak. So then, but that's just me. I'm not an engineer, but yeah. Now there are a lot of headers here that need to be connected to. So I've got three fan headers here in the corner. Opposite this we have the RGB over here, which apparently is important. I think it's RGB, I'm not sure. It should be. Just unnecessary crap. I should be able to get to that once the card is together. Now we find out you forgot something. Because <laughs> that happens to me all the time, especially when we do thermal pads. I'm like, oh. So, RGB. It's not a RGB on this, it's RGB analog, but that's fine. It's not like I'm gonna use it. None of my cases has, has Windows anyway if I use this card. So. That shiny EVG. So yeah, 
And now I think we can actually run it in the game. So let's just it to make sure it actually is fully functioning and not semi-broken now. And let's see here. We're posting, so that's good. And I connected my SSD with Windows 10. It uh, has drivers installed, but like I think I showed before we had error code 43. So I don't know if it's gonna instantly work or if I need to uh, like reinstall them or something. Guess we find out. Looks promising now. So a code on this. Yeah, stupid code. Uh, don't see any NVIDIA control panel. I usually have to run the drive for that. Mm. And Windows keeps insisting on Swedish. I don't know. I keep installing English, but uh, if you select like you're in Sweden a keyboard, it's I don't know why. I don't have the problem on Linux. But maybe I'm doing something wrong with this, but I tend to end up with the Swedish even if I don't want to. The Nvidia drives are the same, the international ones. They go like, oh, you had Swedish keyboard location, and you're gonna get Swedish by default. It's like, hmm. Installed an English version of the OS. It's like, hmm. Don't know what that is, I don't remember. But yeah, let's see here. Build is uh, the, the card, and it's, no. Sign of problems there, drivers. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna reinstall the drivers just to get all the panels and everything, make sure that part is correctly done. Finally, we're back in Windows again with some new drivers installed. I had to, well, Windows decided to do a Windows update when it shut down and then the video control panel disappeared. So I had to DDU and then reinstall again drivers. And I tried the drivers without DDU a couple of times before, but yeah, I realized some old drivers when I did, I think, the GTX 570 review, uh, uh, yeah, GTX 570 video repair, semi-repair, uh, was still, uh, like, active somehow, even if you can select clean install NVIDIA's uh, own drivers. Anyway, so I would just waste, like, two hours just trying to get Windows to behave in drivers. And I, yeah... I didn't pick the fastest CPU for testing this. And we actually run the game if we can find it. There you go. See here. Uh, we're running a Phenom 2, like I did in the GTX 570 video, if you saw that. Uh, so it's a very slow CPU, it's like stupidly slow, really, for a card like this. Uh, I do have an i7, but I don't have a cooler that fits it right now. So, and if we're just trying to fix the card, I don't need performance. Um, but uh, if you want to do, like, actually get the performance out of the card, obviously you need, like, an i7 or something. Uh, I got a 3930K in a box that can do full gear troll core, no problem. So, with air cooling, so, yeah. The problem is I don't have a cooler. It's in my main rig. So, anyway, we're pretty... Um, held down by CPU for any kind of benchmarking. So we won't break any record, let's put it that way. But Windows is running, we know the drives were running because uh, we didn't have any error code 43. And yeah, DDU seems to fix so I can get my control panel back, which is good. I can actually go in there too. One, two, and we can like system in for here. They even says driver here. I did have to update because, well, I did update to the latest one, currently the latest one, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it seems to actually increase the direct X level, that was weird, it actually, I think it said 12.0 before. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Latest drivers, so yeah. So the card is running so far. Uh, Let's see, my gigabyte of RAM. Yeah, we got 11,000 megabytes, something, yeah. So that's 11 gig. That said zero before, if you recall. So let's run some Unique Haven here. Okay, see here, RectX 11. That yeah, should be the Ultra Extreme. 
a daily thing. It takes. We can't run there. Oh, why is it defaulting to? It's a stupid resolution. It's even supported. Mm -hmm. Where is it there? That's what we want to run. Let's try this. So let's see here. Top right corner, temperature is 60 C. Memory, memory is at 7000 megahertz. UPS 2.2 gigahertz. Yep, and this is an VD for RTX 2080 Ti. The frame rate is probably appalling due to my fan on two. But, <laughs> well. The fact that the drivers installed and the card is running is a big improvement compared to before where, before when it was basically about the use, useful as a old ISA card, the basic display adapter. Temperature actually dropping, so it's kind of funny, is it idles, idles higher? Because the fans aren't running when it's uh, idle and uh, when it kicks in to 3D Ten drops. That's funny. Also, maybe now my pace will actually settle into place. Anyways, that's uh, uh, Unique Haven. I have run the card in Unique Haven for at least 24 hours, and it was rock solid. Had no issues with this card. Uh, had issues with Windows 10, but. Screw you, Windows 10, you stupid update whenever it's inappropriate. But other than that, the card is by itself perfectly fine and uh, ran fine. So I would consider this card good. I mean, I can test it forever, but yeah. It doesn't seem to be anything obviously wrong with it now. So when I worked on this card, uh, I had to use a hot plate and uh, I ran up, I heat the card up to about 100 centigrade so that's the actual board, the PCB. Uh, so you, for example, if I want to change the memory chip, I use an infrared thermometer and measure it. And when it's, uh, when it's settled around 100, uh, see, that's when I remove it. And the same thing is uh, when I add the chip, I also measure, so I have 100 degrees on the board. And uh, my hot air station that I use, I have that set to 450 degrees centigrade at 50% uh, airflow. This is an Aten uh, 862D and I use this angle nozzle uh, because it's easier but uh, you probably don't even need a nozzle if you really want to do this. Uh, reason I use it, uh, second reason is if I didn't have one I would be filming like this so you wouldn't see anything at all. Uh, if you think you don't see that much with the angle, well you know no angle, angle. You see a lot more. So that's the reason I use that. Uh, the thing with temperatures and, um, and so on and equipment is that nothing is calibrated. Like I haven't had any calibration done, so I don't know like if my infrared is correct. Uh, this Aten, I don't know how that is compared to every other Aten station out there and obviously people have different hot air stations with different powers levels minus a thousand watts that's the maximum it can give so, so when it comes to temperature it depends on the equipment how it's carried obviously and how you work with it so basically if i had this at 450 if i hold my hand there i'm gonna burn myself but uh, that's not the point the thing is the closer i get the hotter the air is so your working distance is also affecting it. What temperature works for me might not work for you. Uh, I found the, what the, the method co the coder uses is a YouTuber. It's called the coder. He fixes consoles. I find that his temperature ranges works because maybe I'm doing it similar to him. Not to say that I'm as good as him is not the point. I just, it works for me. I have people who use lower temperature to think thinks that that is much better, but they do it in a different way. But yeah. But that's the temperature I use, if you're interested in that, that's the 
that what works for me might not work for you. If you don't want to repair a car yourself like this, which I did, uh, you could go to say uh, you could go to Chris Fix Germany. It's on YouTube, so I post a link in the description below. Uh, there's also a link to a video for a 2080 Ti repair. Then you can check out Tech Cemetery, also has a video of a car like this, but the blower version, which is the one I actually would want. And it had a similar problem to this with that chip here and uh, with loose pads. And both of them, as far as I can tell, uh, do this professionally. So in their, on their site, you can find out how to send your car in for repair if you want to. I figure my audience might be the people that want to think a bit and maybe try yourself. So yeah, but I, I use their videos to research among other things. So I'm going to link them because that seems to be fair. And uh, if you should always check more sources, obviously, when you repair things. Uh, for information, I do want to repair it yourself or you want to use their services. So yeah. So I think that's, the, for, that's it for this card. Uh, like I said, I usually don't do modern hardware, but uh, well, I repair anything that I can repair and save a buck. That's kind of why I started repairing um, like a pencil tree motherboard back in the day and so on and an amplifier in my subwoofer thing. So anyways, this is the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter-Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.